Hi, I'm Miss Becky from the Montgomery County Norristown Public Library and today I'm going to show you how to make some corn. Um, it's going to be a uh, decoration for Thanksgiving or for autumn, whatever you prefer. If you don't celebrate Thanksgiving, um, you can just make a decoration. This is only one of the ears of corn um, and we'll be making three to make the decoration but uh, I just wanted to show you um, kind of what the finished result is going to look like eventually. Um, so it's, uh, we are approximating Indian corn and um, this is also known as calico corn. It's, um, people have called it Indian corn for as long as I remember and I, um, I'm not aware that we're calling it anything else yet, but uh, it seems like everything that has previously been Indian, referring to Native Americans or indigenous people, is being changed because we don't want to be insulting in any way to people who um, are Native to our country. So um, we'll call it calico corn because that's another name for it. And uh, we're going to make three ears of calico corn and then we're going to bind them all together at the top with some ribbon and make a nice little um, decoration for you to put up in your house. So uh, I'm going to show you the materials that you need and if you got a packet from the library you can kind of skip through this part or watch it. Um, I always make my videos in case there's someone who doesn't have a packet so that you can be prepared with everything that you need to make the project. So if you're making this from scratch, the first thing you're going to need is the template. You're going to do one ear of corn and two leaves for every corn, ear of corn you make. Um, so you need to have the template and the leaf to do that, to cut that out of the fabric. The fabric you're going to need, um, you're going to need colors in uh, calico corn colors, which are somewhat fall colors but if uh, I'm going to show you a photo of the range of colors that calico corn come in so you have quite a few options I've chosen some traditionally fall colored that's kind of a brownish orange and there's an orange there's yellow there's sort of a reddish uh, maroony red color um, but calico corn also comes in a uh, kind of a pur deep purple color, sometimes almost black, sometimes blue, um, sometimes white or yellowish white with, you know, bits of color, uh, colored kernels stuck in there. So um, you can pretty much do whatever you want. Um, but those are, if you want to stay true to what um, calico corn looks like, you know, refer to that photo and choose your fabrics accordingly. So this is the part of the video where I show you the fabrics that you would use to make the leaves, except that I forgot to bring them home with me from the library. So, uh, and I can't find my personal stash of felt, so um, I'm just going to show you I do have some felt. It's not the right color. Um, the color that you would want to use or what colors you might pick are um, like a tan or a very light brown or even a pale yellow or a very light green because the husks at this time of year are dried out and um, not very colorful. And you wouldn't use purple, but this is the felt that I have. And felt is not a woven fabric, it's a pressed fabric, so it, uh, it doesn't fray or unravel on the edges. Um, so that's a, a good uh, choice to use for the leaves or husks, whatever you want to call it. Um, you want to try to get the felt that is thicker if you, if you have a choice. There's also various stiffnesses of felt. Some are really soft and some are really stiff. So you want to try to look for stiffer felt if you can find it wherever you're looking at it. Looking for it, a uh, craft store or a fabric store would have it. The other thing you might think about using is burlap. This is 
like what they used to make old sacks out of and um, it would be kind of a rustic look for your corn you um, would have to be careful because the edges do tend to sort of fray and unravel so um, think about that as you're using this but um, those are some choices uh, that you could use to make the husks. The other thing is something I discovered at the library, um, that if you got a packet from the library, this will be the choice um, that you have to use for the husks on your corn. So I've decided to use this piece and I started marking it in my phone went did um, again so I traced around here kind of tight on this side but I'm gonna see how it turns out and okay it's got a dip in it we'll fix it where are my scissors I'm just going to trim it in Ugh, off the screen. Just going to trim that edge a little bit. Don't even know that there was a problem. One might be a little bit narrower than the other but who cares nobody's gonna be looking at the leaves anyway okay so now we've got these two cut out and ready to go so I wanted to show you an alternative to using felt or a stiff fabric for the leaves if you cut out your own leaves um, I have this stuff it's called heat and bond it's a, an iron-on adhesive, and it's paper on one side and like a bumpy vinyl-ish material on the other side. And you could use this, you can iron this onto a piece of fabric and make it like a, um, a patch that you can iron on to other fabric. Um, and someone gave us the library some of this so I happen to remember that we had it so I'm going to show you how to use this if you decide that you want to um, do something other than the felt or some stiff fabric to make your leaves for your corn um, it's very easy to use you just have to have an iron and I'll show you how it goes so I've cut out two of these and I have leaves here and I have my iron that is set at medium, medium uh, heat. So um, you put your leaf right side down, wrong side up. You put the um, bumpy adhesive part facing down on top of the uh, wrong side. And you line it up. I'm going to do both of these. Like that and then you just run the iron over one side on the paper um, for about three seconds that's all it takes set that aside let it cool do the other one one two three voila okay I made mistakes just ignore okay so when it is cool still a little warm maybe but once it's cool, you can, this takes a little fiddling, but you can peel off the paper somehow. This one got a little cockeyed, but we'll fix that later. Okay, there we go. Peel the paper off. And this is like, a, you can uh, see that it's kind of shiny. It's kind of rubbery feeling. So now we're going to put that face down. We're going to take 
the other part of the um, leaf, put that wrong side down on top of the adhesive. I'm going to iron that for about seven seconds. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now we have a leaf that stands up. It's still a little pliable. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim the edges because some of it's a little bit off. And then we'll go from there. I forgot to mention that you can pick this up in uh, craft stores, hobby stores, um, and uh, fabric stores. So as you can see, the edges were a little bit off. I'm not a machine. I make boo-boo sometimes. So I'm going to take, I have a pair of pinking shears. And you can see the blades have kind of a zigzaggy pattern to them. And these are fun to use. I'm going to cut off the edge in this pinking shear design. You can just use your regular um, scissors and just, um, just trim the edges to make sure they're even. But I'm doing this. And of course, um, if you don't want to bother with this, if you've got um, other stuff you can use to make the leaves, uh, maybe some burlap or, like I said before, the felt, um, which um, you may or may not be able to get it a stiff kind of felt that would stand up like this and not flop. But um, whatever you got, whatever works for you, you don't have to do this. I just wanted to show it so that you knew that it was out there. At some point, you may do a project where you need some fabric to stick together somehow and you don't feel like sewing it. This was the reason that I chose this for you. If you got a packet from the library, you will get the leaves pre-made like this um, because there's a lot of hand sewing in this project and I thought I would spare you a little bit by not having you make the leaves. So sometimes if you're making up a pattern, um, and I do that sometimes, sometimes I find things online to uh, projects to show you, but sometimes I make things up or I see a picture and it inspires me to make something um, look like that. So um, that's what I did in this circumstance. Anyway, Sometimes you'll find yourself at a point where you think, gee, I could have done that better. Um, it would have looked nicer if I would have done this or it would have worked out easier if I'd done this. So this is one of those instances um, where after I made the initial video with the felt leaves, I got this idea to use this heat and bond um, for the leaves. And there was a step that I sort of forgot in the initial video so I'm going to um, fix that now so we're gonna fold or you know kind of roll up the leaves like this and kind of stick them together and then we're gonna put them so that they lay down with the edges even with the widest part of the corn ear um, and it doesn't matter if they're folded perfectly um, it's going to all get bunched up in a ribbon in the end, so you won't even see this part of it. So I'm just going to, sure I am. This stuff's a little tough to work with. And just be careful you don't poke yourself. But get those pinned down. And what we're going to do before we sew all the way around is I'm just going to kind of sew these down to the edge so we don't have these bulky pins to sew over when we get around to that part. So, um, and you want the leaves to go down because you're going to place the other half of the corn on top and then when it turns right side out, they're going to be on the outside. And that looks like a rabbit, <laughs> but it's all good. Okay, so I have a needle and thread here and, um, I'm just going to kind of tack that down so we can take the pins out. So 
I've already knotted the thread. It's threaded. Um, and if you don't know, this is not all the way up to the edge. Um, if you don't know how to do that, just keep watching. I'll show you in a few minutes. Um, it's probably good to watch through a video before you try to do the steps, just so you're prepared for what's expected. This. <laughs> Let's move these up a little bit more. Pin one at a time. Let's do that. And it's okay if they're kind of overlapping. It might be a little hard once you get around to sewing over that part, but um, you just be careful when you get there. So we're only attaching it to one side, but we want the idea is to be able to get rid of these pins because that just adds extra bulk. So I'm coming up from the bottom. Doesn't really matter because you're not going to see this, but we're going to just do a running stitch down and up. So down and back up just to catch those edges so that they stay down and that one's still not you want to make sure they're close they're matched up at the ends at the edges okay so we're just going to keep try to catch as much as you can when you're going up and down and this one's uneven too. Just. And sometimes when you have an idea, you don't realize how fiddly it's going to be when you actually execute it. I don't know where my thread came up. Just want this all to stay in place. For right now so that when you come around with the actual stitching with the other piece on top these leaves will already be in place and you get rid of any pins because you just don't need that much to deal with when you're sewing so I'm just going to do a quick tie off Try not to get tangled, which I have. This is my constant problem with this. Seriously. Okay. One side always gets longer than the other when I have two threads. And I don't know why that happens. Okay, so we're going to the loop almost tight run your needle through knot it off and do it once more take a stitch to the loop run your thread through the loop pull it tight and then just take another stitch and where's my regular oh well we use pinking shears what the heck okay so now, this is attached here, so we don't need the pins. We're just going to kind of roll this up and out of the way down here. So we're just going to put a pin or two in here just to keep that. And be careful because it's pretty stiff. I put that pin through all the layers you can do like half and half if it's too hard to get it through so then you're going to take your second piece lay it on top and proceed with sewing everything together where i put this right side down on top hold those over i'm going to pin put a pin right in the middle to hold that all together Maybe you need a couple if you have short pins. 
Okay, so now I'm just going to put another couple pins up around here. Kind of off kilter a little bit. Center that a little bit better. Put a pin or two here in the bottom. Just to keep everything all together now. Okay. Now we're going to get our needle and our thread and we're going to sew around the outside. So we got our needle. Just pop that right there for now. And then we're going to take our thread. And I will show you how long to make it. You want your thread long enough so that you have plenty to work with, but you don't want it so long that it gets tangled and it's too hard to pull through. So what I do is I take the end and I measure out an arm's length. So about right there. Now I'm going to double it. I usually double my thread just so it's my stitches are extra strong. Two threads are better than one. Okay, so cut that off. Find one end. Get your needle, and we're gonna thread this. This sometimes takes a little bit of practice to get it all the way through. Cut it. Pull it out. Okay, so it's through. Pull it until you reach the other end of the thread until they're together. And if this thread were much longer, I wouldn't be able to reach the needle and the end of it. Okay, so now we have our two ends together. We're going to wrap, we're going to pinch that. Let me do this this way. Do this way. Turn this around. Okay, so we're going to pinch the two ends between your thumb and forefinger, wrap it around so that it crosses. Okay, pinch, wrap, cross. Now we're going to roll. You want to make sure those threads are together. You're going to roll it off your finger and you see that it's starting to twist up as you roll. Pull it, pinch it with one hand and pull the thread with the other until you get a knot. See right there? I'm going to do it again. I'm going to roll it around, pinch it, and then you're going to roll it off the end of your finger and pinch and pull till it's tight. And there, you have your knot. And I'm just gonna trim this tail off because that's just gonna be problematic if I don't. And make sure you leave your knot, don't cut your knot. Okay, so we're gonna start and we can, we're gonna leave about this much of the edge open so that we have a place to turn it around and right side out. So I am going to make some marks, like one about here and one about here. It's about two inches, a little shy. Okay, so now we're going to start. We're going to do a back stitch. So I am going to, you always start bringing your needle from the bottom to the top or from the back to the front. So we're going to come up from the bottom. Pull it tight. Now, for the back stitch, you, you may think that um, you may have learned or you may have seen people sewing down and up, down and up, and down and up. 
and that's fine. You can do that. That's called the running stitch. And it's faster, but it's also not as strong. This back stitch gives us a little more strength so that our stuff doesn't fall apart. Okay, so you made a stitch. You went down and you came up. So now we have this thread here. We're going to, instead of taking another stitch here, we're going to go backwards and we're going to go down where we came up before. So we came up here. So we're going to go down there and then we're going to bend the fabric and then we're going to make a stitch ahead of where the thread came out. So you're going to go back, under, and up ahead. Okay? About the same with the way as you're going back is when you're going forward. Okay, so we're going to go back and then ahead, ahead of our thread. Pull it snug, but not too tight. You don't want to bunch up your fabric. Okay, so we're going down behind and up in front. And try not to get things stuck in there. Down behind, up in front. And just make sure you're feeling where those leaves are inside, that you don't catch them as you're sewing. And then down, behind, and up ahead. And try to keep your stitches the same length, the one behind the same length as the one ahead. Okay. And you just keep going around. We're going to go all the way around the corn until we get to the other side of this mark. Okay. Try to keep a quarter of an inch from the edge. And if you don't trust yourself to stay an even width away from the edge, you can always take your pen or pencil and measure a quarter of an inch all the way around and make a pencil line. To follow. You want to make sure you're not too close to the edge and not too far away. Okay, so I'll take us to the tip and around and then I'll come back when I'm finished. Coming around, get to the end of the corn cob. Don't make your stitches too big. I'm kind of getting a little ahead of myself here. I'm going to take this pin out because I think we're good. closer together your stitches are, the sturdier your project is going to be. And I went over. Get out there. Okay. This pattern kind of looks like eyeballs looking at me from this side. <laughs> Those blue things look like iris and pupil from an eye. Okay, I think you're getting the hang of this. Okay, we're just 
just about around the tip. Okay, so I'll meet you back here when I get to this point. So I didn't get all the way around before I started to run out of thread. So this is what you do if this starts to happen to you. Take your next stitch. But instead of coming all the way through, leave a loop. And then you're going to bring your needle up through and pull it tight. Now we're going to take another little stitch back over top of that one. Don't pull it all the way tight. Leave a loop. Bring your needle up through and pull it tight. And then we're just going to take another little stitch just to anchor down our tails. And we're going to clip that off. And take that little bit of thread off of your needle and throw it away. I already have some more thread measured here for ease of demonstration. Threading my needle. Come on, go in there. You're almost there. Go in the hole. There we go. Pull it through. Whoops. I'm up somewhere here. Well, I might have made this a little bit longer than before. Can I match up our ends? Bring them together. Wrap it around your finger. X. Pinch. Roll. Pull. And there's your knot. Okay, I'm going to trim off that tail again. Not too close. Okay. Smooth out my thread. Now I'm going to come up. Oh, Ooh, see what happened here. I got close to the edge. So I'm going to start back here a little bit. Actually, maybe I'll do... Hmm. <laughs> maybe I'll start from this side and fix that. Do you see that my fabric shifted a bit and my stitches got really close to the edge? And I'll start back here. Good thing I flipped this over and saw that because that could be a problem. Okay, so we're going to keep up with the, um, the back stitch. Keep going around, back behind forward, ahead. Mm -hmm. Keep feeling for those leaves. Make sure they're underneath there. The other problem with making your threads too long is that they tangle up and make knots. And that's no fun. Okay, back and forward. Back, forward. Okay. So I'll keep going around. And actually now I think I'm going to flip to the other side and keep going the way I was going before. Now that I've got through that rough part. Because all my pins are headed this way. I'm just going to keep going here. I'll be back. Okay, now I'm coming up to the top where the ends of the leaves are. Now I'm looking down in here and some of these are further away from the edge than others and I want to make sure that I'm sewing through all of those. So I'm going to make 
my seam a little deeper here just so I can make sure that I get all of those leaf edges caught up in here. So we're going to come around the corner and just make sure you see where they all are. For some reason that one got a little lower so I'm going to make my um, stitches a little lower here. Now you're going to go through several layers and you may want to just pull it through and then instead of trying to bend it come up through from underneath and I would make the stitches a little closer here if you can just because there's all these folds there you want to make sure they stay folded okay so I'm coming up ahead just a little bit Okay, so you see that I'm below where the edge, oh, maybe you want to get a little bit lower, the edge of that is, because we want to make sure we completely catch all of those edges in our stitching. And now I got a little bit of a tangle there. I'm going to get rid of that now. Pull it over. Okay. Coming up, just right on the edge of the um, the husk there, catching that. Okay, so now we're back to our regular schedule, regularly scheduled stitching. Okay, coming around the corner. Almost to the mark we made our stopping mark. Getting there. There. Put on some soothing music or a book on audio. We have playaways. You can there's a story loaded onto a little playaway MP3 player. You just plug in your earphones and you can listen to a story while you're doing this. Um, if you need to read for school. It's a great way to multitask. You can listen to the story and you have something to do with your hands. And it's all good. Okay, so just about to the mark. A couple more stitches. Now, there's you can do one of two things when you get here. You tie it off the way I showed you before with the double the two loop knots or you can just leave it because we're gonna need to um, sew this hole shut eventually so I'm just gonna leave it for now make my life a lot easier okay so now we're gonna pull everything right side out and you can grab those leaf, husks, whatever. Pull those out right away. Get those pins out of there before you kill yourself. Here's the other one. No, there's two. I thought there were two. Or maybe not. Don't remember. Yep, there were two. Okay, so we got those out of there. So we're just flipping everything right side out. Just keep turning it. 
pulling and turning. And then you can take an unclipped pen, sort of poke this down in. Curve up here at the top. Yep. And now we're going to stuff this thing. When we're done stuffing, we're going to pick up our sewing where we left off. So now we're going to stuff our corn. So we're going to start with small pieces of fluff, fiber fill, the fluffy stuff with which we stuff the fluffy things, and push it all the way down into the tip as far as it'll go. You want to make it so that it'll stand up, stand out, but not be too full that it's tight. So we're just going to keep putting the little pieces in there so we get everything filled up here. And it squishes pretty well, so you can really pack it in there if you want to. Okay, I think that's pretty good for the bottom. So now we're gonna flip it to the top. Almost there. A little bit more. Just a little smidge. Even that out. Okay, get in there. All right, that seems pretty good. Kind of looks like a carrot. <laughs> All right. So now what we're going to do, we're going to make sure our edges are folded under those raw edges of our opening are folded under about the same distance as our seam was before. So now we're going to keep on sewing. We're going to sew this shut now, but we're going to use a different stitch this time. This time we are going to do a ladder stitch. And the ladder stitch is we're going to bring our needle up and I've already done this but if your thread is still down below you're gonna bring it up close to the edge of the fold and then you're gonna go straight across to the opposite side you're just gonna pick up a little bit of fabric make a little stitch in the fold like right in the edge of the fold and then you're gonna come out now you're going to go across, we're going to go right to left now, straight across, pick up a stitch on the edge, on the very edge of the fold, pull it tight. Now we're going to go right to left, straight across, from here to here, straight across. I'm going to pick up a little bit in the fold, pull it tight. Now right to left, down into the fold, bring up a stitch, whoops, not that little, okay, pull it off the husk, thank you very much, pull it tight, I'm going to try to keep that fluff in there, because that will get in the way, you can always pick it off later. Now we're going to go left, straight across. To right and this is why you don't want to fill it too full because your opening would be bulging with fluff and that would be stop it 
that would be very hard to close. Even at this, I'm getting some in there. We'll have to trim that off. Ouch. Okay, so now we're right. We're going to go left, straight across, up into the fold, take a stitch, and pull it, pull it tight. Not too tight that it bunches. I'm just going to trim that little bit of fuzz off of there. Let's see what we're doing. See, you can't even hardly see where I stitched there. And we're going to go left to right. We're coming straight across. Take a little stitch. Come on. You can do it. A little stitch through the fold. Tight. Straight across. A little stitch on the fold. You get down there where you belong. And pull it tight. All right, what did I do here? Okay. I'm going to go straight across, left to right. A little stitch in the fold. Pull it tight. Straight across. The key is to keep your stitches inside the fold much as you can. Straight across, pull it tight, left to right, find your foot. I'm getting a little tight here because we're close to the end of the hole. Pull it straight across, little stitch in the fold, pull it tight, and maybe one more stitch here, straight across. Come up, pull it tight. Now you see that, or you don't see that, you can hardly see where I sewed there. It's invisible. So now we're going to take a stitch across, catch up both folds, just a little stitch. And then just before, we're going to tie it off again like we did before, we're going to um, bring our needle through the loop pull it tight. This one you can pull tight. We're going to do another little stitch. Same thing. Almost tight but not quite. Leave a loop. Bring your needle through the loop. Pull it tight. Now you're going to push your needle down in and squish it so that it comes out somewhere. Now you can pull it tight because what's going to happen because after we clip this thread, it's going to retract back inside where you can't see it. And you got a nice long tail for your, uh, and there you go. There is your corn. So now you have the materials, if you got a library packet, um, to make three of these corn doojobbies. So now we're going to gather three of them together like this. And if you're paying attention, you notice that I changed the leaves because I already had these two made and I wanted them all to match. So I went back and I put the machine sewn leaves on there. But you'll have your, um, if you hand sewed, you'll have your felt leaves up there. Doesn't matter. Okay, so now you're gonna take your ribbon and I have this nice sort of autumny coppery looking ribbon and you're gonna make like you're tying your shoe you're gonna make an overhand knot over and through okay so I said about a yard in the directions I said about a yard of fabric. Okay, so you're going to pull it tight. Now you have one piece that goes up and one piece that goes down. Now fold over the one piece that goes down to make the one loop. Then you're going to bring this one over top of that. You're going to go around the tree and up through the hole. Is that how you learned how to tie your shoe? And then pull it tight. And just kind of work with it to 
until you get your um, your loops even. Pull the edges a bit until they're the size you want. You don't want to overwhelm your husks there or your corn. So make it just like that, maybe. And just tighten it up at the back. Fluff out your loops so they're nice and pretty. And then you can cut off your ribbon. You can do a little diagonal to make it look decorative there. There you go. And let me put this up so we can see better. There is your corn. I'm going to twist this one a little bit. I don't like the way it's tilted there. And there you go. You could hang this on your door. You could arrange it on a table as a decoration. You could, um, you know, hang it on a wall as a decoration in your kitchen or wherever. Um, if you want to, you can um, knot a piece of thread, sew a few little stitches back here in the back where you can't see to kind of hold your um, hold your ribbon in place and just tie it off the way you learned how. And there you go. There is your Thanksgiving calico corn decoration. And I hope your family likes it. I hope it turned out well. I would love to see photos. If you want to email me at rhoover at mclink, M-C-L-I-N-C dot org, or you can post a picture to our Facebook page. I would love to see your finished results. Enjoy your project and have a happy Thanksgiving if I don't see you before then. Take care.